Hi and welcome to another episode of Ham 101. Ham 101 is the uh, video series that's intended to help new hams get connected into the hobby. Uh, today we're going to cover a topic that has been requested by a couple people at least, uh, and that is how to program your radio. Uh, a lot of people have these nice little handheld radios and they're intimidated uh, by how they uh, program these. So I want to make sure we try to demystify that a little bit today. And so we're going to run through the programming steps of a Yaesu FT70 radio. This is a Yaesu uh, Fusion radio. Don't let the Fusion bother you. We're not going to talk about digital today. Uh, we'll save that for another episode. But we are going to go step by step uh, through the process of what you do to program one of these things. So you're going to need a few things before you get started programming. You're going to need to find out what frequency you need to program. Uh, those, And we're going to talk about repeaters. So we're not going to talk about simplex frequencies today. We're just going to talk about how you get on your local repeater. So the first thing you need to know is what is the repeater frequency. And there are a lot of sources for that. You can talk to people in the club and they can tell you that information. Uh, you can look online on the club website and a lot of times it'll have that information on there. And uh, there's also repeater directories and things like that that are online. Now recognize that some of that online information may be dated, it may be incorrect, so don't get frustrated, but look for an authoritative source that you can find the information you need. What you're gonna see is a, a frequency, which is listed as the, trans, as the repeater transmit frequency, which is the frequency you're gonna wanna program. Uh, behind that, you may see in parentheses the PL tone. And I, if you remember what a PL tone is, that is the tone that the repeater needs in order to retransmit your signal. Without that tone, you won't be heard. So that's important, whatever's in that parentheses. There may be a plus or a minus associated with that frequency. Um, the uh, Most of the modern radios, the ASUs, the ICOMs, the Kenwoods, things like that will set that for you automatically. So you don't need to worry too much about that plus or minus. You will occasionally run into a situation where uh, there is an oddball repeater out there that has a uh, non-standard offset, uh, but we won't cover that. If that's the case, hopefully uh, one of your club members and one of your friends in the club will tell you that. So uh, let's dive into that. Once you've got that information, that's really all you need to program a frequency in your radio. So let's dive into this step by step, and we're going to be looking at this on the Yaesu FT70, um, and that is fairly typical of most of the Yaesu radios. Your radio, if you have an ICOM or a Kenwood or something like that, it's going to be a little different, but the basic principles are the same. The steps may be a little different, the keystrokes may be a little different, uh, but the basic process is going to be the same and the information you need is going to be the same. I'm not going to talk about the Baofangs and the Woshuns and the people, the, the Chinese radios like that. Those are a little bit more difficult to program, they require some more steps. Uh, there's some things that the Yesus and the ICOMs and the Kenwoods will do for you automatically that the Baofangs don't. Uh, and so you'll need to study up on that a little bit to figure out uh, how, to, how to program one of those. Um, so one thing to do is to, two things. One is to have your manual uh, ready. And so if you need more information, you can look in the manual and hopefully get some information on that. If you don't have the user manual that came with your radio, you can download it online, usually from the manufacturer's website. So don't worry about that. That's fairly easy to come by. Uh, the second thing that you want to look up in that manual is how to do a factory reset on your radio. If you get hopelessly screwed up in this process, and it happens, and we've all done it, um, and, and just you just want to start over, you can do what's called a factory reset or a hard reset on your radio. And that's usually an, a very odd uh, collection of keystrokes on the radio when you turn it on, and it will basically reset everything to the factory uh, condition. So it would be just like when you took it out of the box and you can just start over. Um, the other point that I want to make before we get started on this that recognize that uh, you may want to uh, program, you know, dozens of channels in one of these radios. Uh, and if you don't want to do it manually, there is software available. Uh, some of the manufacturers have software. Most of these radios come with an interface cable that you can plug into your computer if it's a relatively new radio, relatively recent radio. Um, and sometimes that's a lot easier to do than to program all these things manually. But if you're out in the field and you need to program a repeater or you need to program a frequency in your radio, it's good to know how to do it manually. So that's what we're going to show you today. Um, so let's start again with the FT70. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that it is in the VFO mode. There is a key there that says V slash M, and what that stands for is VFO or memory. 
The V stands for VFO, the M stands for memory. So when you're in the memory mode, there's a little channel number that shows up on the, uh, on the display. And so you wanna be in the VFO mode, otherwise you're just gonna change that uh, memory channel temporarily and that's not what you're wanting to do. So you wanna be in the VFO mode, which means you can turn the little knob on the top and change frequency. But once you're in that, you can enter that transmit frequency for the repeater directly into the keypad just using the keys. You'll want to, you'll want to uh, enter that as six digits typically. You don't need to worry about the decimal point. Just enter those six digits. It'll put that decimal point in there automatically for you. Uh, the second step you're going to do is to turn on the tone squelch. If you need a tone to access this repeater, and the vast majority of repeaters need that tone in this day and age, uh, you will want to turn on tone squelch. So on the FT70, there is a function key, and then there is a, a button that called squelch or tone, squelch type, I guess it is. And you will want to uh, do the function key and then push that squelch type, and then you can use the knob on the top to select the squelch type. Um, tone, in this case, means it will transmit a tone, but not require a tone to receive signals. Uh, if you use TSQL, tone squelch, that means that it will need a tone to both send, to both transmit and receive signals. So uh, you can just set it in tone for now because that's the vast majority of repeaters. Um, and that, then you hit the function key again to save that setting. The second thing you'll need to do is set the tone frequency. Uh, and that is done kind of the same way, uh, except that uh, Riesu labels, labels this code instead of tone. I don't know why, but they do. So you'll hit the function key and then hit the, to the code key, and then you can use the top knob to dial in uh, the specific PL tone that that repeater requires. Then hit the function key again. Now to save that, so now we've got the repeater. That's the three things that you need to access that repeater. Once you've got that in the VM or in the uh, FT70 case, you push and hold the VM key to write that to memory. And it will flash a little number up on the screen and basically it's telling you that's the first unused memory slot. And if you want to put it somewhere else, you can rotate the knob and change that number. But if you're satisfied with that number, hit the VM key again momentarily. That will bring up a, key, a screen where you can put in alphanumeric characters that identify that repeater if you'd like, if you'd like that. Once you do that, then just push and hold that VM key again, and that will write all that information into memory. It's as simple as that. And then once you've done it, uh, you can put it back in the memory mode and see that you actually programmed the channel that you were after. So um, that hopefully demystifies the programming uh, for this. And if, it, if I went too fast, you can go back and rewind and go through those steps again. But three steps, basically, remember to program in the, the repeater transmit frequency, which is what you get uh, in the repeater directories or the published information. Turn on tone squelch if you need the squelch tone to access the repeater. You can skip that step if the repeater has no tone, uh, but that's relatively rare in this day and age. And the third thing is you need to set the right tone. Uh, you don't need to worry about offset. You don't need to worry about uh, plus or minus, things like that. The Yesus, the Kenwoods, the, the ICOMs, they'll do that for you automatically. So they try to make it easy, but it isn't always easy. So hopefully that helps folks. And uh, sorry for the long absence. It's been a while since we've posted any of these Ham 101 videos. Uh, we're, uh, we're, <laughs> we're back now. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some time here to uh, post some more things. So if you have any comments or questions, uh, you can uh, leave them in the comment section below here. Uh, and I appreciate everybody that has subscribed to the uh, Ham 101 channel over these last several months and we uh, we always enjoy uh, hearing from you so if you've got any questions uh, please be sure to ask those and if you got any suggestions for future episodes please leave me those in for that information also so uh, until next time this is her ben zero 73 and have fun with ham radio